Hi, I'm Lina from Lina Saving Haven. Um, happy to do one seven. So we're going to talk about um, who is God today. So it's been a long break since my last chakra videos and this particular topic. Um, and when my guides prompted me to get back on doing the videos again, I had to check my list because I vaguely remembered that today's topic is about God. But I was wondering whether it's who is God or what is God. So the fact that my guides wanted me to talk about who is God is already um, quite a big clue. It already provides a big clue about exactly what is God all about. Is God just energy? Is God an actual being? Is God um, some kind of force that can be embodied in a form of um, a person? So we're going to answer all of that today, yeah? So um, basically, what they're saying now is that there are three levels of context where we want to discuss God. So we're going to start from the third one. The third is whereby God is basically everything. So you are God, I am God. Um, your worst enemy is God, your best friend is God. So this um, idea is um, based on the foundation that God is everywhere and in everything and all of us are basically aspects of God yeah so um, the second level of context is um, the fact that God is not just a single entity and um, it's also not every single thing in the world but there are actually um, many different gods and goddesses. So to put a number to it, currently there are actually, um, in the whole universe, there are 1487 gods, 1487 gods and goddesses. And uh, some of these gods and goddesses, um, okay, to keep it simple, I'll just use gods to represent both gods and goddesses because some of these gods actually have gender as well. Some are androgynous, but some are male and some are female, okay? So some of these gods um, have been humans before. Some have never been humans. They have been gods since day one. And what is this day one that we're talking about? Um, day one refers to the moment when a soul was created. So some souls were created just to become god. Whereas some um, took um, rebirth in human form, um, even animal form, and even in plant form. And eventually they reach a stage in the journey where they were uh, upgraded to becoming gods. Okay, but um, is it our ultimate purpose to be god? No. Yeah, it's just a specific strategy in a, in a, a particular few souls' plans for them to become god um, so that they can eventually reach enlightenment. So basically, the ultimate aim for all souls is to gain enlightenment. And God is only one of the ways of getting there for some particular souls. So Allah, um, the, the God as in um, Elohim, as in, in the Bible, and even Jesus, some, some says that you know, he's son of God, so he's God as well. Um, all of these are belonging to this level 2 context of God. They are God, but there are other gods as well. Okay, but for today's video, we're actually going to talk about the first level of context of uh, we're talking about God, and which is the original God. So just to let you know, um, I'm not going to preach any religion here. Um, personally, I was born a Buddhist and I was practicing as a Buddhist for many years in my younger years. Um, and in Buddhism, we mostly talk about level two context of God, where there are many gods and goddesses, but all fall within the samsaric world, and none of them are enlightened, even though they may be a lot wiser than humans, and only some of them. Some are not exactly much wiser as well. Um, so what I'm going to channel next really uh, is separate from what I grew up learning and um, understanding. And I would like you to take this in a very objective, almost scientific way so that you can understand this with um, logic and common sense. 
So, um, first level context of God. Um, God, as in the original God, was first created when um, there was nothing in the universe. So, God was the first uh, mass of energy that was formed when there was a divine decision that the universe was to be created. So, if there was nothing in the beginning, who made the decision? This um, goes beyond um, quantum physics and theology. Um, no one knows, no one in this world actually knows what happened before that nothingness. Not scientists, not a spiritualist. Um, basically, this knowledge was not given to anyone in the human world. And it's not going to be given now as well. In any case, um, it's only a small piece of the of the entire picture. So they will just let you to take it that before nothingness, there was still something that represented the divine. And that divine decided that God was to be created. So this is the first level God, okay? The original God. And um, it's a man. <laughs> Um, I, I said that because I had to check whether I should refer to this girl as a he or she and the answer I got was that it's a he. So, um, this is a, this, this, then, this draws a parallel to the Bible um, where Adam was created before Eve and um, in truth, okay, again, putting religion aside, it is true that um, original God is man but um, in a very few moments after that, God then became female and then um, God swayed between man and female, male and female, two and four, for actually for a few million years before the energies um, then merged together to become androgynous, which means that God is both male and female, okay, the original God. Um, so just for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to refer to original God as he. And I will stop saying original God, I'll just say God. Yeah. So there are 10 qualities that God represents um, in terms of having perfected all these 10 qualities. Okay. First is love, wisdom, truth, generosity, compassion, equanimity, graciousness, um, loyalty, um, insight, as well as intelligence. Okay. Some of these qualities are very similar, for example, compassion and love. So you may wonder what's the difference. Well, love is basically the ability to uh, embrace all beings without any conditions. Compassion is the ability to empathize with another person's suffering so that when the person's suffering is in front of you, you literally feel pain inside you, okay? So compassion is very similar to love in that sense because if you have so much compassion for someone, you are likely to have love for them as well. But having too much compassion without love will cause one to fall into depression and to suffer a lot of pain because of all the suffering around you that you witness, that you're not able to use love to heal and to encompass. So that's the difference between love and compassion. The other two qualities which are very similar is uh, wisdom, equanimity, as well as insight, these three qualities. So basically, wisdom is the ability to analyze conditions in a very rational and um, fair way as um, to be able to um, make certain decisions that will benefit the, greatest, the, the greater good. Insight is the ability to um, perceive conditions and draw conclusions from it. So one is on the action level, one is on the more mental level. And equanimity is um, the ability to accept all conditions without judgment. Okay, so sometimes we use these three terms um, in our daily life uh, interchangeably, but um, in this particular context, um, the, they wanted me to explain these three um, so that you understand why do gods have all three of this. Okay, they're not the same thing. 
Yeah. Okay. So um, the next question is um, how involved God is in the human world. Okay. So um, this answer today would be this: not at all. Okay, because over the billions of years that since God was first created, He first took an active part in um, creating some aspects of the world. But um, since the birth of Jesus, He decided to take a step back. So, um, at the risk of bringing Christianity in, I will have to explain this part because um, of the mention of Jesus. So it is actually true that Jesus is the son of God, but um, it's the son of Elohim God, not original God. Okay? But um, because Elohim God is a very enlightened God, if we were to have um, a rating from 0 to 10, where 10 is fully enlightened and 0 is not at all, Elohim is pretty much like a 9.9, .9, pretty much full enlightenment. So Jesus is a level 9.8, just one notch down. So um, because Jesus' destiny was to create such a huge impact on the spiritual evolution of humans in the world during his time, his birth into the world allowed original God to take a big step back and pretty much be hands off, handing the reins over to Elohim and Jesus. So you can say that in the history of mankind, in terms of um, spiritual um, evolution, um, Elohim and Jesus actually played a very big part in the spiritual consciousness of people today. Okay? Um, so if he's hands off, what does he do then? Okay, um, he has three functions. One is that um, he has the capacity and the um, ability to maintain equilibrium within the entire cosmos. So this is kind of like quantum physics stuff um, where um, there are things like chemicals and gases and um, okay, I'm not a science person so you have to pardon me for not coming up with more examples but um, basically everything in the world needs to be balanced and the presence of original God allows this balance to be kept in equilibrium okay that is his first and most important function the second is that um, he oversees um, the key people the key beings in the universe and there are five in total one is uh, Elohim second is Thoth um, third is Guan Ying fourth is Jesus and the fifth is Allah so um, all these five beings are in the range of 9 to 10 enlightenment and um, they are pretty much faultless as in they are flawless, faultless, okay? Um, so original God only takes a very very passive role in overseeing the activities because um, we, as much as we might like to think that um, God, whatever God you may be, um, that God is pretty much like um, he can do no wrong because he has infinite ability to to um, to know and to do every single thing that he wishes. But um, there is still like a zero 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 point zero 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 one percent where gods um, of this high level can still make mistakes. Mm. So, um, original God basically just um, stays in the picture just to make sure that when that 0.0001% happens, he's able to catch it and um, ask the, um, uh, the respective of God to actually handle it. Okay? Because um, original God being the first entity that was created in the universe, 
his energy is basically basically tied with every single atom in the universe. So when that 0.0001% mistake happens, um, it's almost like us knowing instantly when we get a cut on our skin because it's a part of us and we we immediately get notified by our mind when there's a cut on our skin. It's the same with original God. So um, his role is just to make sure that that 0.0001% mistake is corrected um, ASAP. Yeah. And the third role, which is the smallest role and the most unimportant one for him, is um, to coordinate the higher spiritual hierarchy in the divine. So um, let's go into the next topic um, in this video series, um, where I will be channeling information about the spiritual hierarchy, um, who is higher, lower, and the functions of each entity in the divine. So um, for now, we're not going to talk about it, but basically, original God is the one, it's like the CEO, and he oversees and um, makes sure that everything is happening in order. Okay? So, um, the um, essence of what's been covered is basically that original God plays only a very small part in human affairs. So why is it important? Um, so important for the guides to want me to talk about original God in this video? It's because um, we tend to think that um, God is in control of every single thing, and that um, every event in our life can be attributed to God's um, wishes. Um, to a certain extent, that is true, but like only 20% of the time. And this concept only applies to level 2 God, where different gods um, help to oversee different individuals' lives. Okay? Um, and in this context, God is no different from any religious deity or angels um, or any um, beings um, that we know, that we worship and that we learn from. This is not to devalue God in the level 2 sense. It's just for us to understand um, exactly what is the level of significance that God has on our life. Okay? So basically, um, the message here is that God's role is not to control or dominate our life. God's role is not to make things good for good people or make things bad for bad people. Okay? God, and this refers to level 1 and level 2 God, God's um, function is only to make sure that everything stays in balance. And when we talk about balance in a spiritual sense, a very important topic comes in which is karma. Okay? What is karma? Karma is basically cause and effect. If you do something good in this lifetime, it creates a positive ripple of energy and um, it goes around the cosmos and then it comes back to you as an effect in the form of a reward such as good health, um, financial abundance, um, meaningful friendships, etc. Um, and this applies to bad actions as well. Okay, So um, keeping karma in balance basically means um, that um, refers to ensuring that the energy that ripples out from the action comes back as an effect in equal intensity and force. This is mostly automated, but certain um, there, there are instances where the divine needs to intervene to make sure that the en energy comes back slightly less or slightly more, slightly earlier or slightly later. So in that sense, karma can be manipulated, but only by the highest beings 
to know exactly how to manipulate it to ensure greater harmony and balance. So uh, it seems like I'm going in all directions here, but there is actually um, a specific message that the guides want me to lead you through. So how do we um, how do we juggle between these two concepts, God and karma? Because God is often taught as someone that we hand our lives over, that we trust completely, and that um, we accept that everything happens for a reason because God wants it that way. Okay? Not true. Yeah? Whereas karma, on the other hand, is very often viewed as punishment. Oh, something bad to you happen is a retribution. Or, oh, you have not been in good health. It must have been you have done something terrible in past lives. This is mostly true. But it has to be um, viewed in a more objective sense because karma is also not handled out by some kind of high being who decides, okay, person A, terrible person, let's inject some punishment into his life right now. It doesn't work that way. It's just like um, the dominoes effect. If you push the dominoes, um, the first domino down, depending on the spacing between the dominoes and the number of dominoes, they are all going to be pushed down in domino effect until the last one falls down. Does anyone manipulate or does anyone decide how fast the dominoes fall down? Or... Um, or exactly when does the last domino fall down? No. It's just a objective process of one thing leading to another. And that's karma. Not decided by some kind of higher, higher entity who hands out punishments like candy. Poison, poison candy. Okay? So, um, to uh, simplify even more, God is ever present, but He does not bother about our human lives. This is level one God, okay? Level two God is also always present, and He only intervenes with our life when it is critical to our spiritual growth, okay? So stop thinking things like you wake up and the skies are blue and you think, Oh, God made it a wonderful day for me. It's good to be grateful, but do not thank, do not, do not be grateful for the wrong reasons. Be grateful for the wonderful day, but there's no need to say that God made it a wonderful day for you because you have an important event going on and you need um, the weather to be good. And you pray to God to make the day good, and you woke up, the day is good, and it's all thanks to God. I'm not trying to be um, sarcastic or frivolous, and I'm not being judgmental to those of you who actually um, do respond in this way. I myself used to respond in this way as well, where I will thank the universe for everything good that's happened in my life. So it's one thing to be grateful, it's another to be to um, be bought to buy into the victim role where God is the puppet master and he's just pulling the strings for you to um, be on the receiving end of um, certain circumstances that affect you okay so um, more importantly we have to think about karma so although we are also not being punished for bad actions handled, uh, that we created in the past but um, it still affects that bad action will create a bad consequence, good action will create a good consequence. So we need to start empowering ourselves to be the master of our own lives. Um, and when we start creating more actions, positive actions, creating more positive energies, we can be assured of um, a very good future ahead. And um, this is all completely in our own hands. Okay, so um, in summary, talk to God, pray to God, worship God. That's all fine and dandy. But when it comes to living your life, take things in your own hands. Okay, do good things, be kind, be nice to people, be good to yourself, 
love yourself. And when that happens, God will be up there, not doing anything, but giving you a thumbs up because that's exactly how he wants you to live your life as well. Okay? So, um, I hope that I did not step on anyone's toes in this video. If you are offended by some things that I said, just take it with a pinch of salt. I'm not forcing you to accept anything. But um, I hope that this makes sense to most of you. And I, I welcome you to leave me comments if you have any questions about um, more, if you want to know more about level 1 God or level 2 God or even level 3 God. Okay? So, thank you for watching. And um, I promise to get the next video out soon. Yeah? Thank you and have a good day ahead. Bye.